Coming up next, Frank and Mary in Framingham with your hosts, Grace O'Donnell, and me, Arthur Bergeron. Our guest today is Alana Dundon. Alana is a Dementia Friends champion at Dementia Friends Massachusetts. Stay tuned. Welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services at the Callahan Center. And I'm Art Bergeron, friend of Grace O'Donnell. Uh, I'm an attorney. Uh, I do nothing but elder law. I work at Myrick O'Connell, biggest law firm outside of Boston. Because there are 70 of us, everybody gets to do what they like, and I like this. This show, though, is not about elder law. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. You may have seen them in one of my seminars. I always talk about Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., and the fact that their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you live here in Framingham, that means you want to die in Framingham. You don't want to go and live with your kids in Colorado or Arizona. You want to be here. This is where your friends are. It's the community that you know. And so the question really is, who are the people that you need to know? And what are the programs that you need to know about so that you can stay right here in Framingham? My co-host on this show is Grace O'Donnell, who finds all these great people every single time. Uh, and we get to talk to them about a lot of different programs. So, Grace, who do we have as our guest today? Hi, Arthur. I'm really excited to introduce you and our audience to Alana Dundon. Alana is a Dementia Friends champion at an organization called Dementia Friends Massachusetts. So, hello. Hello. Thank you very much for coming. Thank right? you very much for inviting me. And so, and by the way, my job always at the beginning is to say, so... Are you a Framingham person? Do you live in Framingham? I how, live in how, Framingham. How long have you been here, and how I did you end up here? I have been here for 14 years. Long time. Long, long time. time, yeah. That's very exciting. I came exciting. from Brazil. Yeah. That's very exciting. Yeah. So, Dementia Friends? Yes, I am Dementia Friend Champion, mm -hmm. and I can lead groups that the people can become Dementia Friends. So this is a very good program. So you're helping people to recognize when somebody has dementia and how to interact with them? Actually, the Dementia Friend program is a, a public uh, global awareness uh, program. And um, because there are more and more people with dementia, uh, it's very important the people in the community uh, to know more, uh, have some more information, you know, about mm -hmm. dementia. We, uh, Dementia Friends Champion, are not expert, but we can tell the people uh, some awareness and we can help them to find support right. when you have somebody in your family or in your neighbor, friends, whatever. Yeah. So, That's important for people to know they don't have to go down that journey all by themselves. There no, are people yes, that can help. Yes, because this journey actually is really hard, yes. not just for the person, but the family who is right. around these people. So this program helps you that, uh, to learn this. You can, somebody can help you, mm -hmm. you know, give you a support. So I'm curious, how did you get interested? Because so often I know, so I, I pretty much deal just with folks who are elders, well, as Grace does, right, because of the nature of my work. Mm -hmm. um, and I found a lot of the folks who are very active with, in dementia-friendly efforts and dementia-friendly communities are folks who somehow got impacted, that there was a relative, there was a friend, there was somebody that really had, they had to deal with. So how, how did you get interested? Actually, I am a psychologist, and mm -hmm. so I'll always oh. I worked with emotional issues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is very interesting for me. And when I know about this program, um, I said, maybe this program can help me because I have a member in my family with mm -hmm. dementia. Mm -hmm. So I participated, and I liked it very much, and I saw there are so many information over there that I didn't know. Right. So I said, why not to be a champion and 
uh, teach other people about that and spread this information, uh, especially in another community, right. not uh, just in English, but in another community. So right. I became uh, a dementia friend champion. That's great. That's, <laughs> no, so, I'm, so, Grace, I'm just curious. No, I'm curious now. Right? So, can I ask, is, has the, is the attitude toward folks who have dementia? The same among or within the Brazilian community, at least as you found as within the Anglo community, or or do you find that there's a real difference? Is there a, is there a uh, no? It's the same. It's the same. Um, it's very struggling, you know, <laughs> for all families. The the same way, of course, dementia is very different in each case. So the family will see any problem, different problems. Mm -hmm. But it's the same way, Brazilian or other community and or American community too. And, and what do you teach them? Like when, when you're when you're when as a dementia as a dementia champion, mm -hmm. one of, one, it, it's a wonderful thing that you that you've got some tools to really help people kind of go through this. Yes, actually, our goal in this program is uh, to teach five kids messages. So the people who is attending the, the, this course, this training, mm -hmm. this program, learn about these five kids messages. So when you learn about that, you see that you don't need to be so scared, but you know what you can do mm -hmm. with uh, another people who has or a friend, you know. So these five kids are very important. So we focus on this, on our program. So what is one of the main five messages that you uh, Well, I, I can uh, read about for you, uh, but in the course, of course, we um, explain much better mm -hmm. and we interact in, in this program. But one of them is dementia is not a normal part of the aging. Right. I hear okay. a lot of a lot of people think that it is that yeah. we are all destined to have some form of dementia, and it's important that people know it. It's not the norm. No, not it's everyone not. will come down with that. Maybe somebody um, younger can yeah. have that. Mm -hmm. Dementia is caused by disease of the brain, mm -hmm. so this is important to know too. Dementia is not just about having memory problems. This is other thing that we can learn because we think it is just it, mm -hmm. Pro yes. memory problem. You know, sometimes people become lost. You know, they, their surroundings, even though they're familiar surroundings, yeah. they don't look familiar to them yeah, anymore. Yeah, and they cannot speak very well. The mm -hmm. words doesn't uh, don't come, you mm -hmm. know. There are so many other There are more factors things. than just oh, forgetting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, the most important is, uh, is it possible to have a good quality of life with dementia? Yeah. Sometimes people yes. doesn't believe that, but mm -hmm. it's true. And I talk to clients all the time and I, who, who are very nervous about this because they talk to their lawyers a lot. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, you know, if I had a choice between having a bad back and having a bad memory, I'd rather have a bad memory. Mm -hmm. I'd rather not. If I had to be in pain all the time, you know, at least if you're going through dementia, you're not going through that, you know. Yeah. It's hard, but but it's it's a different kind of hard. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. Even we have here um, a professor of uh, law professor mm -hmm. of Harvard. He said it's very important to talk about it. I talk about Alzheimer everywhere I go because he lives with Alzheimer. Right. Because he's living with so it. Right. He has some quality of, in his life. Mm -hmm. you know? And the last one is there's more to the person than dementia. Right. We have to believe that because it's not just a dementia in front of you, it's a person. Right. The, there's, and there still so, is more that people can contribute oh, even yes. if they are dealing with this disease. Yes. And there's yeah, more that the community can do to help support the family or friends who are taking care of the mm -hmm. person with dementia. Yeah, the support is really important mm -hmm. for both right. who has dementia and who is taker of this person. Right. right. This is very struggling, you know. Yeah. I was going to ask, how many of these uh, presentations have you done to, 
for other people? How, how many people have you helped to train uh, to be dementia friends? Uh, well, you mean in Massachusetts or, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, well, it started in the United States, in Minnesota, mm -hmm. in 2016. And Massachusetts started on 2018. Mm -hmm. So now we have uh, almost 6,000 uh, wow. dementia Terrific. friends. Good. And United States is uh, 7 2,000. Wow, that's terrific. Yeah. So more and more people are becoming that much more aware yes. and more familiar with it. And so hopefully that will diminish some of the fear factor that people have and make them more aware of how they might be able to help some people who are providing care for people with dementia. Yeah. And what is very important, this program uh, have be, can be done in seven different languages. Wonderful. So it's in English. Spanish, Portuguese, that's what I lead, mm -hmm. uh, Vietnamese, Chinese, Russian, and Russian uh, Creole. Ah, terrific. So, that, that's pretty much all the big immigrant languages in Massachusetts, yeah. what you just went through. So it really covers a lot of the that's folks here true. in Massachusetts. So the community cannot say, oh, I don't know because I cannot understand the English. No, right. you, you have in your language. So mm -hmm. this is really good in this program. And are they looking for more people to be like you, trained as a dementia champion who speak other languages? Uh, yes, because nowadays we have around 400 dementia Terrific. friend champion. That's what I am. Uh, and always, if we have more champions, more groups can be um, done, can, can learn about that, mm -hmm. you know? Terrific. Yeah. Great. Now, and Grace, from your perspective, kind of how does the, how does the Council on Aging fit into all of that? You know, how, how, cause, because certainly I know you, you deal with folks regularly coming in and they've got these kinds of around questions around this issue and they're big issues. Well, that was a thing uh, about 10 years ago, Lisa Ushkernis, who is the uh, social services director at the Callahan Center, realized she was getting more and more phone calls with people saying, you know, I'm dealing with a, a family member who has some kind of dementia, what can I do? And so she really pressed for there to be some more um, programs put in place for that. We have a program at the Callahan Center called Continuing Connections, mm -hmm. uh, where people who have Alzheimer's and their caregiver come together. So it's sort of a peer support. And it's also led by a licensed social worker who guides people through some art therapy, some music therapy, helps people connect with some of the connections that are still in place. Yeah. And so a lot of our role as the Council on Aging is letting people know these kinds of other programs are available outside of the Callahan Center as well as what we offer inside, and that people don't have to struggle with this by themselves. Uh, pick up the phone, give us a call, check out the website. There are other resources to make this easier for you. Right, hey, which is... Yeah. Sorry, it's good to know that we can, uh, this program, break the silence, you know? Yes. That you can talk about this. Uh, nobody wants to, to have this disease, but it's there, it's happening, so we can break the silence. So our, uh, we champion feel very good to, to break this right. and give them some more information. And that, what I said, don't be scared, but right. now you know to do, what to do. And one of the key teachings for people is to learn to moderate your your emotions if you are the person taking care of someone with dementia. I was going to say, how do is, you, what do you mean? Do well, you? it can be very frustrating if someone keeps asking the same question. But if you can learn to try to calm down your frustration, realizing they can't control that. And if you can just sort of go with wherever they are, or if possible, redirect them to something else that they might be able to focus on, then it will be a a more pleasant interaction for you and for that person, and then uh, they will have a, a, a better experience with you. If someone tries to uh, 
correct somebody who is thinking something from the past is happening now, that just makes the person with dementia a little more frustrated. And so if somebody is saying, well, I'm going to go see my mother, even though you know the mother passed away some years ago, learning to just ask questions about that, oh, and what does your mother look like? And sort of get them back to where they are with that happy memory. In some cases, that can just really be more calming for the individual who is having these memory issues. I suppose that's going to be a real challenge, though. If you've yeah. got a person, especially if you're a caregiver, and I, th I would think most caregivers are family members or very close friends yeah. of the person and therefore know the person from before the person had memory issues. Right. So the notion of being able to, to take that, this, this, I want to say a new person, but take the person where they are, yeah. who the person who has, got, has the disease, and therefore these are simply symptoms of the disease, right. has got to be really hard. I mean, as opposed to a, well, I'll call a typical disease, you know, where, where someone's in pain or someone's, you know, they've lost their hair, they've got some kind of a problem, but to simply have a person who looks the same, right. but isn't, you know, but but as you say, has qualities are the, that are the same. Oh yeah. But things that have also changed, and to be able to really ch re re change change that that I want to change that relationship, but be, be attuned to that. That's going to be really hard. Right. Especially yeah, you you have to learn something that you don't know until right. you you see the, the situation. Mm -hmm. So in my groups, we we. Uh, learn a lot of things because it's very in person is much more interactive right. because you can do this program online but in person is very good because right. I can tell you my experience other people can tell them right. so I learn every every group I am I am learning you know and mm -hmm. they are learning too right. It so, must be very stimulating for you as a psychologist, though, because oh, you're, yes. <laughs> you know, you're focusing on these kinds. Of, I won't necessarily these kinds of issues, but on really a lot of interpersonal issues anyway. Yeah. So yes. to see this whole other dynamic that's mm -hmm. that's happening. Yeah. Now, have you gotten the sense has as Grace had said that Lisa Rushkerner said that this had, you, you that you've bumped into that you've seen this more that, each year? Do you find that this is like an expanding problem? Uh, or do you think it's just that people are just more open about it now than they were before? Oh, they are much open. Yeah. Uh, it's like other diseases that we didn't talk about right. before. This is one of them. So now the people are talking a little bit more, but uh, some people um, get like, ah, I don't want to show my member with uh, dementia because I will be embarrassing because she's asking too much or other thing. It's not just asking the same question, but other things too. Uh, so we tell them, don't need to be. So you you can put these people uh, in the community. Okay? These people can do something and show us how to live with quality. But and I suppose, it, or I'm sorry, I suppose the more people you've trained to be aware of those symptoms too, the easier it becomes for that person to be in the community. Sure. Right? Yeah. And that's the thing, it is important for people to be able to still be social and yeah. to connect with the people that they do still have fond memories of and that they do recognize. It's important to keep that intact as long as possible. And so as much as people can avoid isolating yes. and keeping the person from being out in the public, it's much better if they can get comfortable with that. And the whole point of the dementia friends is that more people become familiar with that. And so if they experience someone in the public who is having those difficulties, they smile to that person oh, yes. and they don't shy away from them. The more all of us get that message, mm -hmm. the better it's going to be for the caregivers and for the people with the condition. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we know in Massachusetts, our population is getting older. And this... No, us? <laughs> We're getting older? <laughs> right. So we have to expect if something will can happen. <laughs> right. I hope not, but can happen. So if we understand better, we can uh, live with mm -hmm. that. Right. It's better, right? right. But I suppose yeah. just that example that you gave, just the notion of, ha of having folks just be willing to smile at you right. as opposed to avoiding you. I mm -hmm. still remember there's, there's a wonderful, um, uh, actually another senior center director in another community 
whose mother was going through this. Uh, and, and, and the mother had been very active in the church, mm. had close friends. She was still living at home in the same town. But, but none of the friends were coming over. And so she, the, the senior center director, the daughter, talked to these folks and said, you know, it would be great if you could come over just to see mom. And the reaction was, well, I don't know what to say to her. She's not the same person. And, oh, and, and, and which we get. Right. right, and that's true. But but if if they had some of the training that you're just you're talking about, mm -hmm. it gives you it, among other things, it gives you some things to talk about, it gives yeah. you things to say, yeah. and maybe just to smile. Yep, and sharing right? those positive emotions makes such a difference with people. You know, it really it really can change people's day around. Right. You know, how often have have we experienced when somebody just out of the blue said something kind to us, oh, yes. and that carried us through the rest of the day? Right. And that can be the, the case for other people who are dealing with dementia as well. Sometimes they'll, they may not remember the name of the person, but they remember they felt good. That they felt good. Oh, yeah. And I would yeah. suppose the program that you're doing at the Senior Center also has got to be helping a lot of folks, mm -hmm. right? Because they just come away with a different feeling. I know I, I had a, uh, um, my sister's husband was, had, had dementia, stayed at home for, it was mm -hmm. because my sister was there and, and some of the kids were around, they were able to stay home for a long time. But he started going, she started going to a, uh, a, uh, an adult day program. It was one in Marlboro, right? And I, re I remember, always remember her saying one day she, she picked him up from the program and, and, uh, and he was smiling and she said, she said, so how was your day? Oh, I had a great day. He said, what did you do? I have no idea. He said, <laughs> but, but I don't remember. But, but, but that's not the point. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. it. That's not yeah. the point. The, right? feeling, the feelings that remain. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And, and the important thing, too, is for people to get a diagnosis. Because not every form of dementia is the same. And oh. some are temporary. Some are a matter of a medication interacting or a, a um, low level of certain vitamins, so it's important to go to a doctor and yes. have it have it tested so that you know for sure what you're dealing with. Yeah. It's not because you are forgetting something; you no. yep. you'll have dementia, you have Alzheimer. Alzheimer mm. is the the most common mm. we we listen about, but yes, it's important the doctors <laughs> give the right. And so, if I were trying to get, if I were a person who is in, in kind of in, in in need of some of this training, right? Mm -hmm. Because I've got a, someone who's going through dementia. Or if I wanted to be like you, if I wanted to be a champion, what, where, where would I go? Where, how uh, would I find out? Uh, you can look for uh, dementiafriendsma.org. You can find groups in there that mm -hmm. uh, you can go um, in person or online and learn about this. To be champion, you have to attend a two hours uh, information session. It's a little bit different, uh, but you can attend. You can be a champion too. And when you did it, where, where did you get trained? Were you, was it right here in Framingham? Was there a uh, no, place in close? Boston. In Boston? In Boston, yes. With this organization I am working with, is Jewish Family and Children's Services. Mm. So they have a lot of uh, programs running, and one of them is Dementia Friend. Terrific. So I went there in Boston. Right. They were, they were I think, one of the real initial founders of a lot of this, mm -hmm. right? Jewish Family and Children's Services of, of Greater Boston. Mm -hmm. Yes. Was, was really, once again, because there were some folks that were going to, right. to their organization, and they were finding just what you found, right? That more and more people were talking about it. And the question was, how do you deal with that? Exactly. Right. Yeah. And in this program, uh, I give this um, material, you mm -hmm. know. Um, in this case, it's in English, but I give in Portuguese. Mm -hmm. And over here, we have uh, many organizations that can help you, mm -hmm. support mm -hmm. you. So, oh, I don't know what can I do. So you can call them and figure it out what right. they, they can give to you, you know, the information, the, the support. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really know because I needed it, so I didn't know before, mm -hmm. and now So has I how have. has this helped you with the family member you have who has Well, dementia? helped me a lot to understand where I was going, where mm -hmm. my member was going, 
and what can I do? Okay. Because change one day is different from another day. Right. You know, uh, some attitudes you had before you cannot have anymore. We need to change something. So uh, everything here helped me to understand that. Okay. And not to be so scared how I was, right. <laughs> how everybody probably is when mm -hmm. see this problem in front of them. Right. But the, oh, now I know where can I find mm -hmm. some help. Very so it helped me a lot. Yeah. yeah, and you're aware that it keeps changing. I guess that's that's the yeah. hardest part is to acknowledge that it keeps changing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But but also as, once again, as I tell clients who are going through this. You know, if you're a friend, you're, it's just such a blessing to the person that you're with. Mm -hmm. Because without that friend, where are you? You're right. either totally stuck, you're lost at home, right? You're probably heading for a nursing home. If, if there isn't anybody that's there to be with you, mm -hmm. because as you find, it, there, it, you come to a point in the, when you're going down this road, somebody does need to be there with you, right? right? Or else it's just dangerous, yeah. right? So to have that, that's, that friend is probably the best friend you'll ever have. Right, yeah. A friend in need, <laughs> a friend in need, right? Yeah. So to have that person is just a big deal. Hmm. Alana, is there anything else that we didn't touch on about dementia friends that you wanted to share with us? Well, uh, in these groups that um, I, I lead, um, I, I saw that the information was very, very little, you know? Uh, most of the, the group didn't know about, just listen about Alzheimer and in mm. one a movie or in one program, but uh, it's not very real what mm -hmm. they show us right. in one movie. Sometimes right. it's very, it's more romantic mm. than normal. So they, when we say about that, they said they scared it a little bit. And after we go to explain what's going on, what happened, and where it can find some help. So they said, oh, it's good to know. Yeah. So now I, I will be in touch with who has dementia, or I will try to, to explain what you said to us for other people, or for my friend who has this in her house. So... The group is very good because of this. Mm -hmm. They have something to do after the, the training, you know? Right. They are more in touch, at least. Very good. Yeah. So it gives them something concrete, concrete. that they can do. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I suppose it also gives them other people to talk to who are going through this. Mm -hmm. If they're going through the training, yes. it's probably yeah. the greatest gift you can have is just yeah. someone to call if there's trouble. Yeah. Right. In one group, there was a, a psychologist student, and she asked me, how can I be a dementia friend in yeah. the trip? Because she speaks other right. language. Great. So you can find other people for that, too. Yeah, terrific. So yeah. you inspired somebody else. <laughs> yes, that's you, great. Yeah. So, so just tell us again, for folks who are listening to this and want to contact mm -hmm. this organization, what, what's the best way to contact dementia them? Dementia Friends, yeah. M-A, Yep. .org. Dementia Friends MA, all one word. Yes. .org. Dot org. And, yeah. and, and if they want to be talking to you about the program that you've got, you is happening at, at the Senior yeah. Center, who, where do they, how do they find uh, you? They would call the Callahan Center, 508-532-5980. And they're going to get a real person. They it's a great thing about the right. Callahan, a real person answers the yes, phone. And, this is like a very like friendly a, real a, people. And a very friendly real yeah. person. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, this was you. really just this was terrific. And and Grace, thank you. I think this is this. I think to ha to give people just this kind of window into who they can contact is just a big deal. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. Yeah. I thank, thank you for this opportunity. Yeah. Oh, it's been great. So thank you very much for watching, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. <laughs>